You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. As some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of No More Future. And as always, I've got Sedge with me. Hi, Sedge here. Just Sedge. <laughs> Just Sedge. I'm here. All right, guys, uh, just sit back and enjoy the video and let us entertain you for the next 20 to 30 minutes. All right, off I go. Oh, one second, let me start a little time. There we go, okay. After waving each other goodbye, the two of you head your separate directions. Without even knowing it, you're already outside the building, headed back the way you came in the morning. You thought your troubles would mostly be over as soon as Arthur got out of your life, but that maimed dragon just had to come around. People, are, oh, by the way, people love him <laughs> in the comments. Jasper. <laughs> he feels like someone who you probably shouldn't mess with. Someone who not even Mary can do anything about. Someone who seems to have a bone to pick with you for no good reason. It really makes no sense. He seemed irritated by your presence alone, and he always addressed you as if you were nothing more than an appliance. Shouldn't he be more enthusiastic about you, considering how much time and resources his company probably spent to allow you to exist? To continue existing, rather? Maybe he's just salty about the expenditures, like every stereotypical CEO you've heard of. And yet you can't help but feel like there's something more you still don't know. At least it wasn't all bad. You may have made a new enemy, but you also made a new friend. Perhaps not the one you envisioned, but most certainly the one you needed. Despite oh, I'm sorry, despite how overwhelmingly despite how overwhelming her sensitive side can be, something about Natalie's honesty and eagerness to be your friend makes your heart feel a little fuzzier when she's around. Aw. Oh. Well, figuratively speaking, anyway. Hey there. Sorry for the wait. Took me a bit longer than I thought to hook everything up. You stumble in your step as a familiar voice suddenly booms in your ears without notice, almost making you fall right off the sidewalk in the process. Nats! Could you warn me next time you do that, please? You almost gave me a heart attack! Oh no, I didn't do it again, did I? Happens all the time when I'm trying to call Mary or my other co-workers. Oh no, indeed. Anyway, I finally got access to your GPS system. I can plan to route home from here and teach you how to set up for yourself when we're at your place. Sounds good? Yeah, sounds good, I guess. In that case, you believe to consider using some form of public transport to get around the place faster, but you quickly figure that it may not be a smart idea. You've already learned your lesson from this morning. Commuting in your current state isn't going to be very fun. The best thing you can do is travel lightly and travel alone. After some deliberation, despite the time constraints, you opt for the simplest course of action. Show me the fastest route to the new relay, sir, to the new relay train station. We've got a train to catch. You begin your trek home with Natalie's voice ever at your side, treading the same path as this morning in reverse. The Labrador originally suggested a more scenic view through the, through the livelier side of town, but you quickly convinced her otherwise. You quickly, you quickly agreed to follow this path in particular, as this road is apparently the quickest to the station, not to mention the most peaceful at this hour of the day. Truth be told, after all the screaming and shouting you just endured, some peace and quiet is all you can really ask for. Moreover, the evening sky in the distance is still as pretty to look at as ever, with its delicate rosy hue covering the horizon like a blanket, so it's not a wholly uninspiring journey. But then again, nothing in the city feels uninspiring to begin with. Mom, you grew up in Bloomberg? I think I remember visiting once with my, with my grandparents. It looked like a nice place. Natalie's questions appear to never cease, and so far you're more than happy to indulge in them, even when there's not much for you to reply with. Yeah, it's alright, I guess. Isn't it, like, two hours away from here? And I guess I could think you need to take the train. Two hours by car, yeah. On the other hand, with the mag train, it's about 20 minutes. By the way, Bloomberg's nothing to get too excited about. It's just a city like any other, really. Nothing novel or extraordinary about it. Oh, is that it? So it's just a place you have any born, I take it? Eh, pretty much. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying your time in your relay, then. I know you didn't get time to see it all while you were busy or from the transition, but trust me, it's the coolest place on Earth, for sure. That I know of, anyway. Right. You sure you're not being a bit biased? Maybe. I do like high spec. Ugh, dear lord. Maybe. I do like high spec stuff a lot, I guess. Plus, I do sort of live here now and all. Now? Where did you used to live? For once, your canine assistant is remarkably quiet. It takes her a few seconds to answer your innocent question. Washington, D.C.? Really now? 
That's interesting and quite strange indeed. The capital of the United States is certainly not a city you expected her to mention so unenthusiastically. Huh. That far away? Yeah. She doesn't sound particularly thrilled as she recounts this part of her life to you, that's for sure. Let me guess, you didn't really like your hometown either. Yeah, it just... I kind of like the atmosphere of the place as well. Too stiff, too boring, too fake. The city, or...? In general, I mean... It just wasn't the right place or environment for me, so I took the first chance I got and went as far as I could. I like she had a lot more to unpack than just her luggage upon arriving here. As much as she's trying to play along, it's clear that she's not very happy to talk about these things. Maybe you still don't know her well enough to properly have this discussion right now, which is quite understandable considering you literally just met. You should probably get back to the original topic while you still can. Well, I'm happy you're somewhere, you're somewhere nicer now. You seem to really enjoy this place. Her voice does a complete 180 as she hastily replies to your remark. Yeah, this place rocks. You should totally hit me up next time you come visit. I can show you around. There's the old district, the museums, Gibson Park. Nah, I'm not kidding. There's just good amusement park downtown. <laughs> There's an amusement park? Like, in the city? Yeah, it's built almost like a real housing district, but it's actually chock full of stands, shops, and super cool rides. There's an arcade, a bump of cars venue, and even a roller coaster travels through buildings by the windows. Like, you can even travel around with mini cards. It's gotta be the coolest amusement park in the world, right? You can feel the canine's excitement from all the way over here, and you have to admit that it's rubbing off on you pretty fast. It really does sound like a lot of fun. I've never gone to an amusement park before, so it'd be fun to go check it out with you one of these days. We're gonna have so much fun, Isaac. Oh gosh, I can't wait to ride a roller coaster with you. First time I make the funniest noises. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? As the Labrador laughs at your in, at your indignated question, you find yourself laughing as well. You're not sure whether it's the mental image of you crying like a baby on a coaster causing it or Natalie's overwhelming personality, but you simply can't stop laughing along with her. For a second, you can almost imagine yourself having fun like a normal human, and feel the wind gliding on your skin as you scream and shout into the air. As, this, as the giggles begin to subside, you take one long look into your synthetic hand outstretched before you, you inspect it from top to bottom, taking notice of every tiny detail in its design. The light and squishy textures of the palm, the sharpness of the gem-like claws, the stiffness of the contraptions near the joints. As you try opening and closing it rhythmically, trying to feel every sensation the seemingly pointless axe stirs up in your mind, you can't help but wonder, does it truly feel the same as it once did, when you still lived? Hey, what you thinking about now? Nothing. I was just, you know, lost in thought. Ah, uh, sorry. I probably should be talking about the exciting stuff you're busy walking home. I don't want to distract you or anything. It's okay, you're fine. I like being distracted. Plus, I found that whole talk about the amusement park and stuff very exciting. It's definitely something to look forward to, for sure. Really? Well, I'm glad you're already looking forward to that. But for you, let's not get too ahead of ourselves, shall we? We still have a train we need to catch. You're right about that. Speaking of, how long until we get there? Hey now, don't you start it. I'm usually the one who asks, are we there yet? They're trying to steal my job. The two of you keep teasing each other as you continue heading towards your destination. As you're walking, a delightful breeze stirs up from below, caressing your sun-dappled body all over with its cool, delicate touch. Perhaps it doesn't feel quite the same as it used to, or maybe it does and you can't tell, but for now, as you whimsically chat the evening away with Natalie, you're content just feeling it all. You finally reach the train station, still bustling with activity despite the late hour, ready to finally embark on your brief journey home. Oh, is this new music? Yep. Like it. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, sounds good. You notice that Natalie has been rather quiet for a while. Either she's busy with something, or she's doing her best not to bother you. You wander into the main hall outside the station proper, surrounded by all kinds of shops filled with overpriced goodies. Overpriced goodies. Hollow boards everywhere swarm you with unwanted ads for products you can't bring yourself to care about. You try to look away from all that nonsense, but the only place that's not littered with them is the floor. To be fair, it's not as big of a deal now that your eyes can't be damaged by all this light pollution, but it's quite annoying to look at nevertheless. The memories from earlier that morning come back to you, come back at you at once again as you walk through as you walk those echo-infested halls. 
In spite of your efforts to forget it, you begin to relive your awful encounter with those conceited police officers. You shudder as you look forward, cautious of any blue vests hiding behind the corners. As far as you can see, there doesn't seem to be any of them prowling about, for now at least. You pray your return home will be quiet and uneventful, as much as your new circumstances allow it to be anyway. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, the backgrounds for pretty much all pretty much all backgrounds we saw so far are slightly different compared to how we saw them when we were like coming from the station in the morning. Yeah, is it, is it a light change? No, they're like like every time of day is custom made. Ooh, interesting. I like that. Mm -hmm. As you pass through this checkpoint gate, still wondering about that accident, you reflexively reach into your pockets for a train ticket, only to realize that the gate's already opened as soon as you step near them. While you run a hand down your face in utter embarrassment, Natalie suddenly decides that it's the perfect time for her to chime in. I'm oh, sorry, were you... were you trying to reach for a physical ticket? Yeah, yeah. Isaac still uses train tickets like one of those weird old people. I already heard it all before. No, no, I'm not judging. I really liked them when I was younger, too. Yeah, was the opinion of that was just the priest. You... used them, too? Oh, no. Uh, my old auntie used to collect them back in Washington. I often spent time with her when I was little, so I practically know her entire collection by hand. That doesn't make you feel any less antiquated. No. I guess I was just surprised. I figured everyone had already moved on the digital ones, like, a century ago. Everybody uses integrated smartphone tech these days. Or just integrated tech in your feet. Right. Well, the ticket machines are still here for anyone who wants to use them, though I doubt anyone even glances at them anymore. I like to think I'm one of the only people in the country who knows how to operate one, aside from the average nursing home resident, I mean. I know, you very well may be. I always thought they were just here as, like, a memorial to the past or something. Like an impromptu speed museum. How long do you think it has been to actually change the paper for tickets and sign? I bet it's a mainly every day that was about 15 years ago. Why would the two of them bet on something so random? Do they do this often? Wait. Your grin widens as you realize that the time of your life has finally come. All that meaningless trivia you learned over the years is about to pay off right here, right now. Close, but not quite. As of today, it's been 67 years and 11 months down to the wire. Labrador's reaction is decidedly overblown, but nonetheless greatly appreciated by your ego. No way! You're totally making this up, aren't you? Nope. That's the day the station was fully renovated, and much of the old machinery was scrapped. They were supposed to get rid of the ticket dispensers too, but they forgot nobody's felt like moving them since. My aunt told me the story a couple of times at least. You can check it out. You can check it if you want. She's never wrong when it comes to this stuff. You hear the sound of Furious keyboard tapping on the other side of the call only for it to be soon replaced by a long, defeated sigh. You didn't somehow figure out how to look things up in the web on your own, did you? That implies that Arthur actually bothered to teach me during our brief time together, which, yeah, right. Honestly, it's surprising how many odd bits and pieces of trivia I've retained during the transition. I have expected to lose most of my memories in the process, maybe even come out completely different, but as far as I know, I'm mostly the same as I was when I first entered that tube. Assuming everything worked as intended, of course. You're not supposed to lose your memories in your transfer, no. It kind of ruined the entire process of stuff like that would have happened. I mean, imagine if someone to lose all their memories in your transition. It would be the same thing as saying when we transfer a small part of a person. Don't even argue we would reincarnate a different person entirely. A person is defined just in a few key traits or experiences. It's some of everything that we are that makes us us. You weren't expecting such a thorough explanation to your question, truth be told, but knowing all that but knowing all that does put some of your wor worst worries at ease for the time being. Huh, I guess that makes sense. Hell, I'm pretty impressed you knew the answer to that. I guess I'll eat pizza, huh? Well, since you're offering, I think I'll have one with sausage, pepperoni, and blue cheese. Roger that, I'll write them somewhere, eventually. Maybe we can have that next time we come over. Unless you ever had a big cigar for that dinner at night you were planning on these days. Uh, just thinking about it makes me embarrassed. I can still hear Mary's laughter in my head. Let's get back Mary has some people, yeah. If it consoles you, I found it cute. You did? Yeah. I mean, it's not the first time someone invited me out for dinner, but it was the first time someone tried to do it as a friend. 
You can feel your cheeks getting warmer as you try to look away from Natalie's invisible gaze, only to hear a girly chuckle on the other end of the call. That said, if you still find it embarrassing, I'm fine if that's something over at the lab the next time you visit. Yeah, I'm down for that. Count me in. As the two of you laugh alongside one another once again, you think back on your time with Natalie so far. First an invite to an amusement park, now take out the labs. She's definitely She definitely doesn't shy away from the idea of spending more time alongside you. I wonder how much of it is due to her desire to be your friend, and how much she depends on her interest in you as a synthetic. By the way, how come you don't them so much back then? Train tickets, I mean. Oh, that? It's a long story. I have time. If you want to talk about it, that is. You sigh as you prepare yourself to relive those old memories of yours. It's fine. Long story short, my parents were paranoid of most forms of technology. Like, real paranoid. Physical tickets, physical books, no internet access, unless absolutely necessary. They were old-timey like that. Some of it was manageable. Pretty cool, even. Never thought real books could be so comfortable to read on compared to the digital textbooks I used in class. Most, however... Not so much. Uh, give me one moment. I'll be right back. Looks like cats are about to get into a fight. Sorry about that, guys. I had to preemptively break up a ca uh, kitty cat fight. Anyway, <clears throat> some yeah, of it was being the shit out of this other guy. Wait, what? And, you know, like sometimes people just barge into your room and you have to tuck them in the in the nose or something. Yeah, I'm I, I understand that. <laughs> Some of it was manageable. Pretty cool, even. I never thought real books could be so comfortable to read on compared to the digital textbooks I used in class. The rest, however, not so much. I mean, you can believe I, you can believe I only got my first smartphone when I was 16. They were so... Where? Natalie interrupts you in the middle of your rant, likely without even meaning to. Yeah, sorry, I guess you wouldn't know. Dad died when I was 11. Lung cancer. Tumors run in the family, or something like that. Mom's still alive, but a surge of dark thoughts resurface in your mind with the strength of a leviathan, threatening to swallow you whole. You vigorously shake your head in a desperate attempt to suppress them, trying to stay focused solely on the conversation before you. We, we don't talk much. We haven't spoken since I underwent the transition. Or, rather we did, but it's complicated. It takes a while for Natalie to reply, but when she does, her voice sounds just as sad as yours. I'm so sorry to hear that Isaac for making you relive all that stuff in my It's, uh, it's alright. Let's just talk about something else, shall we? Yeah, good idea. And hey, uh, speaking of other stuff to worry about, you're kind of holding up the line. <laughs> you immediately turn your head around, surprised by Natalie's sudden remark. You finally notice that a line is indeed formed behind you. Several feet behind you, that is. Everyone's still giving you the cold shoulders and the puzzled, frightened looks, it seems. Even though there are other gates near you, nobody feels like entering the station while you're standing so close to them. Also, the train departs in a so... Wait, what? Why didn't you say earlier? I'm sorry, I didn't want to... Oh my gosh, there's no time, just go! You sprint past the gates as quickly as you can, ignoring the gas for the shock commuters behind you. You're glad you had a few weeks to get accustomed to your new robotic body and its differently over and its differently sized limbs, as you have a feeling you wouldn't you would have tripped and crashed three or four times by now otherwise. It's only through a miraculous stroke of luck that you manage to get inside the train right as the doors behind you close. Blah! Right as the, right as the doors begin to close. You run so fast you almost crashed against the wall opposite the entrance in your mad dash to the finish. Luckily, you somehow found a way to stop in time. Your legs must have been even stronger than you imagined. That, or you're blessed with remarkably good luck. You realize your breathing has become has become quite frantic after all that running, driven by the same subconscious impulses that governed your lungs back when you were human. It takes a moment of focus for you to steady your breath, but soon you're back to what you now consider normal. Such a strange reflex, though. Oxygen is somewhat necessary for your new body, or so you seem to remember, there should be no reason for you to start hyperventilating after a workout like that. You assume it's just an instinct your mind has carried over from your time as being of flesh and bones, much like many other quirks you still possess in spite of the new, very different circumstances. Hey, you made it. I'm so glad. 
Natalie's voice yet again forcefully drags you away from your curious mind and back into the living world. That was way too close. We almost missed the last train home. Yep, that wouldn't have been fun. Sorry about that, by the way. I shouldn't have distracted you like that when we're already slow on time. Nah, you don't have to apologize. I did say I like to be distracted, after all. You were just trying to help out. Oop. Let me, uh, back. There we go. After a brief uncertain pause, Natalie speaks once again. Well, if you say so, I guess all I can say is thanks. Anyways, now that we're finally inside, how about we find a seat? Assuming there are any left, that is. Yeah, sounds good. I'll start looking. Around. You could have sworn the carriage was almost full to the brim while you were desperately dashing to it earlier. However, all that remains now are a handful of careful bystanders that curiously watch you from the far corners of the carriage. The rest appear to have fled through the door to the next carriage over, which shuts with a click right as you lay your eyes on it. You thought it'd be different, New Relay, but even here, it seems as though very few people want anything to do with you right now. Oh, huh, that's weird. I could have sworn there were far more people here before. It appears that Natalie's a little slower on the uptake than you are. Yeah. Me too. You head towards the nearest empty seat, of which there are plenty, and let your body lazily collapse on top of it. Try not to pay heed to the annoying gazes of the few onlookers left, preferring instead to fix your eyes on the ever-shifting environments outside, much like you did earlier this morning. Second one to number carried over while we're talking. There we go, okay. Seems to be that way, yeah. Why would I do that, though? Is there an announcement on the intercom I didn't hear? Or I see some fire or something? Is it... Don't worry about it. The Labrador immediately quiets down at your comment. Recognizing that this isn't an issue she should press any further. She probably already knows the answer to her own question anyway. Neither you nor her say another word for a while, content to simply wind down as you watch rapidly changing scenery outside your window. Plains and plateaus, forests and hills, modern cities and rural settlements. A small snippet of the American landscape turned into an impressionist painting through the sheer speed of the vehicle you're riding on. It's definitely easy to lose yourself in the moment as you let those images clash and mingle in your head overriding your every thought as they do so. Say, now that we have a moment... You almost don't notice Natalie's voice at first, so taken you are by the spectacle before you. Yeah, uh, what's up? Oh, nothing. I was just wondering if you wanted to start working on some of your features already. The train's gonna take a while to get to its destination after all, and we're not going anywhere. Might as well save some time and get you a little more familiar with your systems. Well, I definitely wasn't thinking of doing that right now. I was planning on just enjoying the view until I got home. Upon realizing that she caught you at a bad time, Natalie's tone becomes much more apologetic. I, I see. Sorry about that, then. I'll let you... No, that's okay. I'm fine with starting now. Really? Are you sure about that? Yeah, I mean, it's not the first time I've seen this view as, a, as I travel to and from New Relay, and it definitely won't be the last. There'll be plenty of other times to admire it, whereas I should probably get get started on Synthetics 101 as soon as possible. You're not sure how much you can cover in 20 minutes the train will take to get to Bloomberg, but any progress on understanding what you can and cannot do with your new body would be greatly appreciated. When you hear the Labrador's voice again, it shows that she's just as eager to begin teaching as you are to begin learning. Great. Let's get right into it. So, where do you want to start? Tough choice. Uh, any suggestions? Hmm... Oh, uh, are you already familiar checking your status on your own? My status? Yeah, like how long you can go before you need to refuel, or whether any of your body parts aren't working correctly. No, can't say I know that. The canine and her boss can thank that piece of junk Arthur for that. Okay, how about we start at that then? Sounds good to me. Though, I can't say I know where to even begin. That's alright, and that's what we're here for, remember? Now, you can check on this stuff whenever you want, but for your first time, it's probably best if you close your eyes just to help you focus. You do as your helper said and try to close your eyes, likely putting your visor on standby in the process. A familiar darkness is all that lies around you, forbidding you from looking past its thick veil. Okay, now what? Uh, try to focus on what you want to see. It could be something I listed earlier, or maybe something simpler like the current time. Focus on the current time? It can't be as simple as that, can it? You try to do as the Labrador asked, focusing all your thoughts on the current time of day. 
pair of numbers separated by a colon appeared amidst the shadows, as if summoned by an order you never explicitly gave. Whoa, that's so cool! I know, right? I just think of anything up here. Kids the world over wish they had an imagination this vivid. It feels so surreal. To be able to learn anything you wish so easily and reliably? Not that you're complaining. Though, to be fair, I'm pretty sure this thing forgot to specify. <laughs> Never mind. I guess I did. It looks like the only limit really is your imagination. Who knows what else this system could allow you to do? You decide to spend some time trying to answer that question on your own. Alright, now try looking up the Wikipedia article for Berlin. You immediately get to work get to work on fulfilling your handler's request. Look up article Berlin. After some time spent concentrating, you can finally feel a surge of meaningless trivia on the European Union's capital manifesting in your head, neatly organized in about a hundred papers. Weirdly enough, even without reading the papers themselves, you somehow already know stuff like the city's location, its history, and so much more. This new brain of yours is truly something. Very good. You're getting better just by the minute. Y you think so? Yeah. I mean, for someone trying out experiment technology for the first time, you're picking up on it faster than anyone could have imagined. Yeah, then you'll be just as good if not better than the pesky Arthur in no time. You smile at the Labrador's remarks, feeling quite proud of yourself for a change. You've been working on this new skill of yours alongside Natalie for quite a while now, trying out all sorts of things in an attempt to get, used to get you used to it. Things like checking the time, the weather, the temperature, the status of your synthetic components. Information that you thought you'd always need an AI for a, or a handler's help to look up are now available to you as quickly as just thinking about them. And now that you can visualize them in your head with your eyes open, there's no limit to how wacky this feature could get. So, how do you feel? Having fun, Isaac? You bet! Never thought surfing the web could be so fun again. And this ability to view what's going on with my body at all times? I really wish I had access to something like that back when I was a regular human. Yeah, I can imagine. But look at the bright side. No one else is ever going to blindside you again now you're equipped with this software. I'm not letting you catch one anymore, given that you're synthetic now and everything. It's alright, I get it. I'm, and I'm really thankful to you for showing me how to operate in the first place. I think you've been more helpful in the last 20 minutes than Arthur ever was in three days. You hear the Labrador chuckling on the other side of the call, likely a little embarrassed from all your generous compliments. Anyway, knowing how your body's doing is just a tip of the iceberg, really. This tech interfaces directly with neural systems, so it, can re so it can react to a wide variety of stimuli. You pretend like you understood any of that. So, what's next? Anything you feel like trying out? Mm, we could try watching a video if you want. Oh, that could be fun. What did you have in mind? Well, let's see... Oh! Did you know Mary's about to give an interview on the New Herald in a few minutes? Now that came out of nowhere. No, I can't say I did. The Siamese never mentioned that in the brief time you were in the labs. In fact, she said she'd be busy analyzing your lab results for the rest of the day. Judging by the sound of her voice, Natalie appears to be just as surprised as you are. Me neither. I only got a text message about it 20 minutes ago. Did Mary send it? Yep. Can't seem surprised, honestly. It's always a mystery over she forgot to do something deliberately or not. Either that, or she just thinks this interview's not that big of a deal. Knowing her, that's probably the reason why it took her this long to inform us. I see. What's the interview gonna be about? I have no clue. Could be any number of things. Mary never told me about any plans for interviews, honestly. I wonder if this was Mr. Morgan's idea. In the absence of a definitive answer, your mind already comes up with all sorts of explanations. You don't think he wants her to talk about what happened this morning, right? There's a brief silence on the other end of the call as Natalie considers the possibility. I don't know for this for sure about tuning in. And so I asked if you want to view it. In the event that the topic of synthetics is brought up, and it likely will, I thought it might be interesting to hear what Mary has to say firsthand. Your handler brings up a good point, and it doesn't take long for you to come to the same conclusion as her. Yeah, I agree. How do I start watching it? Just try to apply what you've learned in the past few minutes. You shouldn't have any issues. You try to focus as much as you can on the thought of viewing that interview, but nothing happens. I can't do it. What's going on? You're trying hard is my best guess. The process should feel natural, like breathing. 
well, for human anyway. You try and try again to no avail, but no matter how na no matter how naturally you try to think about it, your perception remains locked in this carriage. Ah, it's no use. Hmm. Could be if the pressure is interfering with your thoughts. You know, like hearing your mistransmission and stuff. By the by, do you actually want to like uh, look at the interview, or do you want to stop like as soon as we get to it? No, uh, well, we can stop when we get to it. We can save it for like okay. the next video. All right. All right. So just uh, let me know where to stop. Yeah. Yeah, that could be it. It's all right. Nobody's born already knowing all this stuff, mainly because there are no synthetic deities to speak of. You can't help but giggle at the canine's joke, in spite of how stupid it is. You've probably been taking this thing a little too seriously for your own good. It's not like your life depends on your ability to tune in to watch a crappy podcast on time. Either way, it's okay if you can do this on your own. That's what I'm here for, after all. If you want, I can hook you up to the interview myself this time. Yeah, I'd love that. Thanks, Nats. I really owe you one. Don't mention it. It's literally my job. And besides, I can always help you figure out how to do this on your own another time. Now, stay calm, I'll hook you up. Your head might spin a little at first. The Labrador's words don't inspire much confidence in you all of a sudden. Suddenly, I'm not so confident about the. Five, four, three, two. Your head spins so quickly. And, yeah. Oh, stop it right here. Yeah. Okay. What do you stop right here? Okay. Ooh, that was nice. Can't wait to see what this interview is about. She's going to be talking to people about the lava lamp. No, it just happened, <laughs> but I can guarantee that the next chapter is going to be a lot more... Not the next chapter, like the next episode is going to be a lot more interesting. Awesome, I can't wait. Uh, thank you so much for doing another reading with me, Sedge. Uh, my audience sure does enjoy your voice. Problem. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye! Bye. -bye. Bye.